a 53 year old male presenting to you in the emergency clinic with one hour of severe unrelenting pain around his right eye and he has never had this before and now he has a vision blurring and he's having nausea an important complaint the history includes his hypermetropia which means that uh, he is wearing a plus correction and he's having rheumatoid arthritis and he smokes 30 cigarettes daily and drinks 15 units of alcohol weekly but of which the important history being hypermetropia nausea he's agitated he's restless his right eye is injected which means this, the right eye is going to be red and the cornea is hazy another important clue and the pupil is semi dilated and unreactive so non reacting pupil which is semi dilated or mid dilated the left eye the other eye is normal and the examination is limited why because when we turn the lights off the pain of the patient is going to be exacerbated or increased so what is the immediate step in this management so these are the options iv acetazolamide timolol latanoprost iv acetazolamide timolol pilocarpin and apraclonidin laser trabeculoplasty uh, consider latanoprost eye drops oral nsaids consider corticosteroids subcutaneous sumatriptan 100% oxygen therapy so of these options you can see that the first two ones has iv acetazolamide so common sense dictates that the answer should be either of these two so before understanding what is the management let's understand let's ask ourselves the question what is the diagnosis what is causing this patient's problems so let's consolidate we have a 50 year old male who is a hypermetrop who is having a painful red eye with blurry vision and he's having nausea the cornea is hazy he's having a mid dilated pupil and turning off the light is going to increase the pain so this is going to be the picture of the patient who is present to us this is going to be the diagram of the same patient why the cornea is hazy as you can see in this picture this is going to be a reflection of the cornea when you throw a torch light and you can see the reflection is not a very clear reflection the reflection of the cornea is like as if a reflection from a ground glass or a translucent glass that's what happens here and why have this hazy cornea it's because the cornea is edematous why the cornea is edematous because the cornea is filled with water the cornea is increased in its thickness because it is filled with these water the water clefts why these water clefts the water clefts are happening because of rise in intraocular pressure so why rise in intraocular pressure it's because there is going to be an angle closure happening which is manifesting as a mid dilated or a semi dilated pupil right so what's happening here is that you have a closed angle of the anterior chamber which means there's going to be an addition between the iris and the cornea therefore this occluding this angle preventing the exit of the aqueous humor via the trabecular meshwork so the angle is closed here we are not sure what has caused that but you see that the angle is closed rising the intraocular pressure so first thing is you have a closure of the angle which is led to an impairment of the drainage of aqueous leading on to a subsequent intraocular pressure so what is the diagnosis the diagnosis is acute angle closure glaucoma this is not an open angle glaucoma this is rather an angle closure glaucoma right and one important thing to consider in this patient is that why do you have this mid dilated pupil right that's going to be the answer which we look forward to but angle closure glaucoma is going to be one of the differentials for acute red eye and defective vision the other differentials being acute keratitis acute anterior uveitis and acute end of thalmitis now let's go into the deep aspects of this question now we know that the patient is going to be a hypermetrop which is a first risk factor because when you have a small eyeball that is a hypermetrop or a long sightedness they're going to have a plus power now this is going to be the small eyeball for this patient when a patient is going to have a smaller eyeball which means that the axial length is reduced when the axial length is reduced which means that the anterior chamber is crowded is going to be small which is going to increase the risk of this angle getting closed easily because of some triggers so first risk factor is to have a small eyeball just to recollect if you can know that when you have a small eyeball what happens here there is going to be a, a past pointing of the light rays the light rays are going to fall beyond the retina so i want to give a plus power such as a convex lens to converge these light rays and to make it fall on the retina that's why these patients will have a plus power a plus prescription that is a clue in the question so the small eyeballs especially patients who belong to the oriental population a chinese person for example will be at more risk of angle closure 
The second risk factor is why the angles should close in these patients. There can be a lot of triggers. There are two triggers. Basically, the trigger should cause a dilatation. The trigger should cause an increase in the pupil size, therefore causing an angle closure. That can be a dilating drop, such as a tropicamide solution, which is normally given to dilate a patient's pupil to look into the back of the eye or the retina. Or it can be a dark light. When you go to the dark, the pupils dilate. That's why in our patient, you can see that turning the lights off exacerbates the patient's pain. Why? Because in our patient, it's going to be an angle closure glaucoma. So when we're going to examine this patient under dark light, the pupils dilate. Therefore, the angle closure is increased, increasing the pain for our patient. So this is what happens. There is going to be a dilatation of the pupil in our patient because of some triggers. And this dilatation has caused the angle to get closed. So what is going to be the treatment? The treatment should be to break this angle closure. And how do we break this angle closure? By making the pupil smaller. Okay. Now what is going to be the aims of the treatment? The aim of the treatment is first to break the angle closure and the second treatment is to reduce the intraocular pressure. So how do we break the angle closure? By giving a drop which is going to constrict the pupil. So now we have a mid dilated pupil. We want to give a drop such as pilocarpin, which is 2 percentage pilocarpin, which is going to constrict the pupil and by constriction it is going to break this angle closure. That's the very first important treatment is pilocarpin. Secondly, we want to reduce intraocular pressure and we need an aggressive treatment of reduction of intraocular pressure. So just the topical drops, so just the topical drops won't be sufficient. We need to give an intravenous or an oral anti glaucoma medication such as acetazolamide which is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor right and often we prefer IV because these patients will have nausea and vomiting our patient had nausea that's why we avoid oral we can start these patients on intravenous acetazolamide which is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor so topical what we can do is we can start these patients on beta blockers such as trimolol and we can start the patients on alpha 2 agonist such as apraclonidin so remember alpha 2 agonist beta blocker and carbonic anhydrase inhibitor A, B, C are going to be the treatment which we give to reduce the intraocular pressure in our patients. Apraclonin is a very important drug which is going to have an, a very good reduction of the intraocular pressures so which is much commonly preferred over prostaglandins such as latinoprost. So far clear? So remember the A, B, C are going to reduce the aqueous production therefore it's going to reduce intraocular pressure. So now what is the best immediate step in this management? Now we know that amongst these two options, there is only one option which has pilocarpin that is going to be the second option. So the answer is going to be the second option, which has IV acetazolamide, timolol, pilocarpin and apraclonidin. So you have this A, B, C along with pilocarpin. Now it is not the first option. Why? Because there is no pilocarpin and you don't use latinoprost as first line. We, we would rather use apraclonidin because of its increased IOP reducing action. It is not laser trabeculoplasty. Laser trabeculoplasty is something what we do in open angle glaucoma. We give a laser to the trabecular meshwork which causes some trabecular meshwork remodeling which increases the outflow of the aqueous. This is what we give in open angle but not in angle closure. In angle closure, what we want to do is we want to give laser to the iris. We want to give laser burns to the iris to cause a small hole, what we call as a laser peripheral iridotomy. Why? Because the pupillary block is an important mechanism which is going to happen in this angle closure glaucoma. So what happens here, there's going to be a block in this pupil which is going to prevent the outflow of the aqueous humor from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber. Hence by giving this laser, what we do is we are going to create a bypass for the aqueous to escape out. And of course, we need to relieve this angle closure. That's going to be important. That's for sure. That's why we give pilocarpin. So a laser peripheral is something which you don't do immediately. You would want to do it when you reduce the corneal edema because initially when you have a corneal edema, when you have a corneal haze, we can't visualize things properly. So we can't give a laser immediately. This is going to be the next step once the corneal edema is going to reduce, once intraocular pressure is going to reduce. Now let's talk about the other options. It is not oral NSAIDs or it is not corticosteroids. Why? Because uh, we give these two in scleritis. So our patient had rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is the most common cause of scleritis. But the other features, there is not going to be any corneal haze, no mid dilated pupil, there will be no problems, there will be no issues in the cornea or the anterior chamber. There's just going to be an acute red eye. And it is not subcutaneous sumatriptan or 100% oxygen therapy, just you give them in cluster headache. So there is no issues with the eye at all. 
So we can safely rule out these two options. And now we know this option is not also going to be the right answer and this as well. So the most appropriate answer is going to be the second option again. Now let us talk about the treatment of angle closure glaucoma in a much detailed way. I think this is a very important topic to deal with. Hence, I would like to add more layers, add more details to this aspect of angle closure glaucoma. The aims, the goals of the treatment is to number one, to break the angle closure. Number two, to reduce intraocular pressure. Number three, to modify or alter the anatomy of the angle and we are going to give some supportive treatment for the patient. So how do we break the angle closure? By giving pilocarpine 2 percentage stat. That's important. Pilocarpine has two roles. It also is going to reduce the intraocular pressure along with breaking the angle closure by constriction. So it is dual action actually. But the reduction of IOP has to be more aggressive because the intraocular pressure in these patients are going to be very high. It is going to be uh, almost 40 or 50 or 60, very high intraocular pressures. That's why we are giving the ABC treatment. We are giving this alpha 2 agonist, that is apraclonidin, to have a better control of intraocular pressure. We are giving a beta blocker, that is a timolol, in our patient, and we are giving this carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, such as acetazolamide. Now, beta blocker is going to be contraindicated in patients who are having asthma or heart block that's why we can give a safer alternate such as dorsolamide in these patients but please be aware of the contraindications of timolol similarly acetazolamide is going to be an important important medication for this patient but again beware that acetazolamide can be contraindicated in patients having renal disease and sulfonamide allergy so we always routinely start these patients on intravenous diamox 500 milligrams stat or oral diamox 500 milligrams stat and then we switch to oral acetazolamide or oral diamox 250 milligrams four times a day so always give high loading dose and then we can reduce the dose for a longer term of treatment now that's with the first two aspects breaking angle closure and reducing intraocular pressures the third one is to modify the anatomy of the angle how do we do that we do it by two means First is that we do a laser peripheral aridotomy as I was discussing before. The laser PA has to be done only after breaking the angle closure and only after reducing intraocular pressure because only then it makes sense for us to do the lasers properly. right? Uh, that's why we give the pilocarpine and more importantly we need to reduce intraocular pressure to relieve the corneal edema so that we can see what's happening at the back well. We give lasers for the affected eye and not just that importantly we have to give laser for the fellow eye for the other eye because the other eye will also have a shallow anterior chamber so to prevent any further future attacks of angle closure we would like to give a prophylactic treatment with laser peripheral aridotomy and some authorities believe just extracting the lens or just removal of the clear lens naturally is going to break the pupillary block because there is no going to be any lens at all. Therefore, the angle will not close. So this is another treatment which we can consider. Importantly, supportive treatment is, is, is going to be crucial for our patients. Why? Because patients having angle closure glaucoma, they'll have severe pain, very high pain. Pain relief is of importance. So always give these patients analgesics and anti-emetics if they have nausea or vomiting and some believe that topical steroids also have a role because it can reduce the inflammation as well but beware that topical steroids by themselves can cause increase in trochlear pressure now this is going to be uh, the clinical guidelines provided by the royal college of ophthalmologists and you can find the pdf of this document in the description box below for further reading I hope you enjoyed this presentation. It's a very important topic, a topic which is commonly addressed, commonly asked for different groups of students in ophthalmology, be it medical students or undergraduates, uh, be it postgraduates or trainees in ophthalmology and even optometrists and nurses also. It's a very important topic. It's an eye emergency. So please read this thoroughly. Hope you listen and hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for your patient listening.